all the other pickup jets and all the rest of it. It's like fucking Piccadilly Circus around here. My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're talking about, so you want to turbo your bike. Um, a lot, I get this question quite a lot, personal friends have asked me, blah 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 blah. You have an old bike that you kind of like, or something like that, or maybe you want to turbo your brand new R1, or maybe, you know, something like that. Right, so what I'm going to do is, this will probably be quite a few episodes long, um, I will start off quite basic and talk about things that you have to take into consideration. And then we'll start moving on to actually working out. Um, I'll give you some mathematics and stuff you have to work out, and this, that, and the other. Um, about aspect ratios, fuel delivery, blah, 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 blah. We'll go on from there. So I'm not going to go in this video of should you or not. That's completely up to you. It's your bike. Do what you want. You probably, Hopefully you're a fully grown adult by now. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to outline some of the things you have to consider before you go turboing your bike. So you have, you know, your bike engine and I'm thinking that most people are talking about their uh, four stroke engine. And the first thing we need to do is consider um, what turbo we need. So um, there's a lot of people who use turbos that are for engines that are a lot bigger than their CC, i.e. the turbo that the engine originally came from. So let's just say we have a Garrett turbo, um, you know, from a Subaru Impreza or something like that. Um, you have your original engine CC, so just for argument's sake, let's say this is a thousand CC and you think, well, I need a turbo for an engine that has a 1,000cc. Well, not actually quite. You don't really need that. What you need to do is you need to work out your RPM um, and then your volume of your engine compared to the engine it was actually fitted to. So this is where you can basically start off. So let's just say that this is from an Impreza, and an Impreza has, I don't know, let's just say... 7,000 RPM and uh, its volume is just say that's it's a 2 litre so it's 2,000 cc so the first thing you have to work out is when this engine's operating at 7,000 RPM it's a 2 litre engine how much air uh, is going through that engine with this turbo feed so if we look at their numbers both of these engines are 4 stroke so you have to remember that your RPM is related to what stroke you're running, um, it's a 7000 RPM engine, so because we have to do two full revolutions for a complete cycle of that 2 litres, it's not 7000 RPM for the calculations, it's half that. So our RPM calculation is half of what the actual RPM is of the engine. And when you times these two together, you get 7 million. 7 million cc if we knock off these zeros that's 7,000 litres per minute per minute so your engine will chew through 7,000 litres per minute at uh, your 7,000 rpm but we just have to half this because we have to go through 720 degrees two full rotations for that two litre engine to fully do its processing. So then when we look at our, 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 our one, well, yeah, let's go with our one, but just say so you go with your litre engine, just say it is an R1 or something like that, your red line just says 14,000 RPM, something like that, and obviously we've got one litre, um, litre, one litre, now obviously this is at boost, and when we look at this, we've got seven, th we've, got, we've got a half that, so we've got a half hour RPM, so that's 7,000 RPM. And you can see 7,000 RPM times by one is 7,000. So your, uh, it's basically the same, it's basically 7,000 uh, litres a minute. Minuted. 
And let's just say that this turbo from the factory runs at, I don't know, let's just say 12 PSI boost. So you generally want to look for the same thing, that's a 12 PSI boost. So now you can see that this 2 litre Impreza turbo will run, um, it basically it, you know, has to chew through with the same amount of air as your R1 will run because it's got uh, half the cc but it can, its maximum RPM is double, pretty much, it's about there. So you could use, this is how you work out the basic calculations of what turbo or what it was fitted to originally and will it work on your bike engine. Um, now we've done that, we need to look at some other considerations before we get knee deep into actually all the calculations and what have you. So the next thing you need to consider after you've done that is you need to um, start to think about how you are going to run this system. So there are two fueling systems that we have to take into consideration. We have to take in fuel injection, which has its own set of issues and so on and so forth. Or you can do carb, um, you know, carburation, you can use carbs. Um, I'm going to split them up into two. We're still going to do it in this video. I'll do injections and I'll do carbs. So what you have to think about is the placement of things. So obviously your exhaust port is here. So you want your um, turbine sat here somewhere. Then you stick an exhaust on it that might come out like this. And then you just cut it short. Or you might actually fit it to an entire exhaust system. It is completely up to you. When you do that, obviously, your impeller side of your housing, your compression side, is on this side. So you have to work out how you are going to pipe your um, outlet from your um, impeller side of things, how you are going to pipe that round to the front of your manifold. Then you have to start to think, ah, do I want intercoolers, stuff like that, um, which can actually be quite important with your engine, especially bike engines, because they rev so high, um, obviously there's a lot more heat soaking throughout the engine and all the rest of it so uh, having a supercharger or something very similar is actually really a good idea especially for bikes um, but a lot of people run without and they, it looks great and they go it works and all the rest of it and then probably two years later they're having real troubles and whatever. The next thing you have to consider is your oil supply so obviously your sump is down here your pump is generally here or here somewhere around here in your engine and you have to be able to pump off oil to your housing and then return it. Now the return line isn't the most difficult thing, that's the easy bit. It's where to pick on your engine um, a bleed off for your, uh, actual impel uh, for your actual turbo itself. Now a lot of people I've seen are pulling off their main gallery. You have to be very careful doing that. Um, and like I say, we'll go into uh, how to work out all that in a later video. But you have to be very careful that you pull off um, some of your oil supply. If the pump is, has been optimised just to basically just creep above the pressure of the engine, and then you go and pull off quite a lot of oil off your main gallery, then your crank bearings and all the rest of it will probably suffer because the pressure across them bearings, because the pump doesn't have enough mass flow rate, you might even have to update your pump or something like that. There are some people who do actually fit external pumps and they basically just suck straight out of the sump and send it straight to the turbo. The other thing you have to do is to make, it, make a consideration of is that this oil system inside your turbo generally through operation is, um, has to have a constant oil supply, sucks away a lot of heat, it's a good thing to get an oil cooler, as you can see it's getting more and more complicated. Um, if your engine is already, you know, at its limit of what how it manages heat and all the rest of it the other thing you have to do is remember is that that hot oil is going straight into your engine that might have detrimental effects on your head because your oil is hotter than it should be um, and so on and so forth the other thing is well you've got to be very careful with pressure balancing and stuff like this because sometimes you can actually have some nasty um, oil leaks into your turbo because the pressure is too high because what's in this system is actually quite high it, it, there's a lot to it and like I say we're going to go through this eventually I'm going to do loads of videos on this of trying to show you how to work out what you should and shouldn't do the last thing you want to do is supply oil that's far too hot to your head because oil cooling is a massive part of engines the last thing you want to do really is starve your main bearings of the oil pressure that they require uh, just because you're trying to power your turbo and all the rest of it. This is in a sense why the H2R that Kawasaki has produced has gone straight to a, an impeller supercharger because a lot of these considerations then disappear. It's all just about pressure and that's pretty much it. 
drawing a bit of power from the engine, gearing up the impeller properly, and then that's it. You know, you have to reprogram your ECU or whatever um, to make sure your f fuel delivery is correct. But apart from that, that's why that that's why Kawasaki have gone down the route of a, um, an Im you know an impeller supercharger because it's actually a lot easier than fucking around doing this. But that doesn't say that this can't be done. It's been done loads of times. It's been done quite successfully. I'm just trying to do these videos to show you. It might be not as, oh, I want to turbo my bike. It's not that simple. The other thing you've got to take into consideration is the height of where your turbo is to your drain and the, where the height is of your turbo to um, your actual oil pump to make sure you get the pressure you require at the plane bearings inside your turbo. Another thing you have to take into consideration, you can see how it's all uh, mounting up. The other thing you have to take into consideration as well is your oil volume because all these lines are pretty much full of oil. The turbo itself's got some oil, and you might have to just basically add some more oil, you know, a couple of hundred milliliters to your actual engine so you don't starve out your um, siphon, your pickup tube in your uh, engine. So that's all that. The next thing we are going to look at is um, the fueling considerations, and these are just basics that you have to start thinking about before you start jumping you know, knee deep in. Um, the fueling considerations now, there's two separate um, instances of that. There's fuel injection and there's carbur uh, you know, carburation, carburetors and stuff. So we'll have a look at that next. So the fuel injection side of things is really actually not that difficult, especially a lot of aftermarket things. You have to get uh, the power commanders and stuff like that. Um, you know, different e ECU systems and all the rest of the aftermarket systems that you can um, tell the system um, this is the base level and all the rest of it. So obviously you have to get yourself some injectors. Now injectors aren't hard to get hold of for different uh, engines or you can actually use the injectors on your machine that you've got in the first place. But you're going to need something like a PC2 or something like that or a PC3 or something so you can adjust um, the air fuel mi the mixture ratios so you can tell it the fact that you haven't got an O2 sensor anymore. Uh, so, so far on, you know, on and on and on and on. Um, there's a lot of um, forums and stuff that, you know, guys who've done this before who teach you about stuff like that. The one I'm more concerned about is the carb side of things. So with your carb, you have your slide and your lid with your spring in and whatever. You have your Venturi, like so. And then you have your fuel bowl. Fuel bowl in there, jets, needle. Right, so we have our carb set up, and um, there's two ways you can go around this. So you can either do a um, draw through or a blow through. So you can put your um, impeller here, at this side, uh, draws air in and then spits out into a manifold and your carb is somewhere in that manifold or maybe the turbo sticks or your impeller housing sits right connected to your carbs. So from your impeller side, if we just look at the pressure increase, you're starting at 14.7. If you're going to give it plus 20 psi boost, like we were using the example of the um, Subaru impeller, uh, Subaru turbo and all the rest of it, it's 14.7 is your basically a zero, you've got a plus um, 20 to that, so that's going to be 34.7, that's the PSI reading if you have a absolute pressure reading, generally you're not going to those, so this is going to be zero, like so, that's going to be zero, that's just normal atmospheric, and this is going to be 20 PSI um, boost in your manifold. The problem with that is that your um, carb and your fuel, the pressure of your fuel in your tank is going to be zero, one bar, 14.7 psi, whichever scale you want to use. And what's going to happen is, is the air is going to be higher pressure and it's going to push your fuel back down through your jet so no fuel will come up, so nothing will happen. To get around this, what you have to do is you have to apply a pressure um, to this fuel bowl. So you've got fuel in here and obviously this has an out all the way to your fuel tank. So the pressure coming down here has to be something like just say uh, 20 psi because that's your maximum boost. 20 psi and then because this is 20 psi because this is a Venturi, it's 20 psi, it's going to rush, rush past here, it's going to drop to like 18 and then fuel will actually go into there. The other uh, way of doing it is having your carb 
so get rid of all this, is having your carb this side, uh, having your impeller this side. So you have a carb and then you have your impeller. If you do this, when the impeller draws in air through your carb, whatever velocity, whatever volume of air that it draws through, your carb is going to draw that through as well. Um, this is the easier way. You don't have to fuck around with pressurising your fuel bowl. There are some issues with this. It does start to lean out when you shut the throttle. There's all some fantastic things. I'll do a lot more of a video on this because it's um, quite... There's a lot more to it and it needs more than a two or three minute explanation. But you can either do a draw through, which is this one, or you can do a blow through where your impeller is here. Um, they both have their merits. You know, one of the things that, one of the pros of this is that your impeller starts to get hot because obviously there's friction between the impeller and the air because it's going so fast. And the air actually helps to cool that down. Um, then you have vapour issues and sometimes you can have a bit of a, a blowback issue and blah, 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 blah. But there's your two options for that. Like I say, fuel injection is a lot easier. You just have to spend a lot more money um, paying for power commanders and all sorts of ECU programming trickery and blah, blah, blah. Um, so there, that's the, this is the video one. This is you want to turbo your bike. These are some of the things you have to consider before you start doing it. The next videos on this subject, I'm going to break down each one. So I will do a blow through. I'll do a draw through video, each separate videos, I'll do what you have to look into if you want to use um, aftermarket ECU controllers and stuff like that and what you have to consider with your valves. I will do turbo location, we'll look at intercooling, oil cooling, where to draw off your oil supply and stuff like that. These will all be individual separate videos because they require basically that much of a, a focus on each one of them. It can be done, it's been done loads of times, you know, I'm not debating that whatsoever. I'm just, this is in a sense a guide to what you have to consider if you think having a turbo is a good idea and you want to give it a crack. I hope that makes sense, you know, it's a very broad, you know, and I just hear the comments always saying, you didn't mention this and so on. Yes, of course I didn't because it's just a, an introduction. But I uh, hope at least that lot made sense and I'll see you in a bit.